And now, ladies and gentlemen, Michael McDonald. Okay, enough. That's it. Shut it down. We have no idea what you're saying. No, no we're done. Enough. Want to learn from those that are taking their lives, their businesses, and their passions to the next level? Best-selling author of Master the Art of Connecting and professional speaker Lou Diamond is here to connect you to some of the most inspiring and amazing people on the planet. Get ready to thrive loud with Lou Diamond. Welcome, everyone, to another spectacular episode of Thrive Loud with Lou Diamond connecting to the most inspiring and amazing people that are thriving each and every day. I'm your host, Lou Diamond, and today on Thrive Loud, we have the CEO and founder of the Base Beauty Creative Agency. She's also the host of Where Brains Meet Beauty podcast. Love that name. For the last 15 years, her groundbreaking boutique outfit, whose holistic, integrated approach to marketing high growth brands has revolutionized the industry. Her new book, Facing the Seduction of Success, Inspiring Stories on Leading in Business While You're Living Your Life is coming out on June 7, 2002, which is literally the day this episode comes out. Thrive Loud listeners, where brains meet beauty meets Thrive Loud. <laughs> Please welcome Jody Katz. Jody, how are you today? Nice to see you, Lou. Nice to have you here. I, I, I'm fascinated by all of this, mostly because there's so many things going on here that is so out of my comfort zone, like anything beautiful and creative. Well, creative actually is, but beauty and all this stuff. I, I want to rewind a little bit to bring our listeners up to speed so that everybody can kind of understand who is this amazing human being that's in front of us here. Can we do like a little bit of a rewind so you can help bring the listeners up to speed as to how this became your gig? So my day job to get here, it was quite a journey. I've had a lot of jobs through the years. I got fired and laid off for many of them, probably more of them, right, than choosing to leave. Um, I was always really interested in popular culture. So that advertising world um, called to me. I worked um, at a very low level job at BBDO, my first job out of college. Um, Which is also known know, as slave labor when they pay you for the amount of money that that is, right? You know? <laughs> um, the I will date myself here, Lou, but my job was to make dubs. So this is when like you take a cassette, a video of a commercial and make a copy with a machine with lots of buttons. <laughs> None of this makes any sense to your younger listeners, but um, very low level. It was a um, really big challenge for me, actually, is very hierarchical. Mm -hmm. And I realized over time that hierarchy is very taxing for me. Um, I um, really rebel in it. And um that doesn't work well in those types of organizations. <laughs> um, but I, you know, got some other jobs through the years in advertising, marketing, um, magazine. So I was always like really around this space. And then I got that one cool freelance gig as a copywriter for a beauty company. Mm. And it was that moment when I'm like, oh, this feels right. You know, everything else was just like, you know, is going through the motions. But here's something that felt really easy and fun. And one job like that led to another. And I ended up becoming the creative director of a French beauty company. And that was awesome. <laughs> you know, it's like I get to play with beauty products, talk about fragrance, texture, um, product benefits, um, bring those to life. And um, but then I looked around and at the time I knew I wanted to become a mom. Um, I wasn't even pregnant, but, you know, I knew that was coming for me and something that was really important to me. And I looked around at the other adults in the room and I thought, I'm not going to get to be the mom I want to be mm. and have this job. So um, that's a really important, I think, piece of learning. Like way before I was even pregnant, I was thinking, can I work here? Yeah. Um, so I think about that, of course, for my team. But anyway, um, fast forward, I where would I work? <laughs> you know, this is 15 years ago. Wh like, where am I going to start um, building a career that's going to give me the flexibility for and the joy? So I just started my own business, which became Base Beauty. So we're celebrating our 15th anniversary here. And um, you are right. We do holistic marketing for beauty and wellness brands. So I get to have a lot of joy and a lot of fun at work um, in a subject matter that, you know, is, you know, really quite um, exciting and always changing. And there's lots of movement, um, M&A and stuff like that in the category now. So it's a really dynamic time. Spectacular. And thank you for that quick recap there. Uh, let, let's address the specific thing. 
What was it like moving from working for others to being your own boss and running your own company? It made so much sense. You know, like that whole hierarchy thing that I was dealing with through the years at big magazine publishers, advertising agencies, um, beauty companies, that whole, like, you have to be in your chair at a certain hour thing. Like it really made my skin like, you know, hurt. Um, (laughs) And um, I never really thought of myself as like a rule breaker. I'm really a rule follower, but um, I just couldn't handle it. So when I went out on my own, and it's very common in my industry, like as a creative director or director or copywriter to be freelance. So going out on my own just made so much sense and um, felt like I could breathe, you know, even though it's hard, you know, I felt like I can breathe in a new way. So this agency and the work that you do, um, maybe let's, let's dive in. Cause like, you know, helping the, the holistic integrated approach, what exactly is the specialty that you guys do at base beauty? What makes you guys unique? Okay. So there's two things. One is we only work in the beauty and wellness space. Right. So if you're like automotive restaurant, um, you know, technology, it's not, relevant to us and we don't spend any time there. So we're very, very, very highly specialized within this, these two industries of beauty and wellness. Um, And then the second thing that makes us unique is that I have staffed every area of expertise that a beauty or wellness brand needs to market in. Mm -hmm. So every single consumer touch point or um, pros, you know, like dermatologists, estheticians, those are really important in our category. So any consumer and professional touch point that's part of that marketing funnel, we have areas of expertise in. Okay. So are you enjoying it these last 50? You've been doing it for 15 years. It doesn't necessarily mean you're enjoying it, but are you enjoying it today? Yes. I um, used to cry a lot. Um, <laughs> and what were, we cry- what, what were we crying about? I want to understand what the pain was about. What, what was upsetting? Um, you know, like these kind of really basic things around just navigating building a business. So difficult clients, yeah. exhausting clients, clients not paying their bills, <laughs> um, clients that are unhappy. I just really didn't have a toolbox for the, the savvy and the nuances of dealing with people who are paying for services. You know, it's a very emotionally charged relationship, I have to say, right? Um, things don't always go the way you planned. And there's a way to make the client feel like you're on their side and we're in partnership together. And then there is a way to um, the opposite would be making them feel like an us them relationship. So I just didn't have the skills, you know, it took this long, I think, to be able to solve those types of problems. Um, And then I think the other thing I would cry about um, is it just felt so alone. You know, I had a team, a very small team in the beginning, but like being the owner, right, those, the financial insecurity of like being the owner and the fear of not being able to pay your bills, it's intense. Yeah. And, and, and it's also makes you grow up really fast, doesn't it? Like trying to to really understand what it's like. Oh my God, look at all the things. I'm not just responsible for myself. And I'm guessing you have a team. You, you're responsible for others as well. Yes. But it took a really long time to get to having a team that allowed me to even like have the mental space to learn how to do this stuff better. I mean, that was always my goal. Like I want to grow the business so I can hire the talent that I know I need to be able to make this what I I dreamed of being, I couldn't do that alone. Like there was no way. Jody, 15 years later, what does this business look like? What are we looking at here at uh, Base Beauty? Well, um, I'm, (laughs) I'm so proud of what we've created. I'm very proud that I stuck to my guns and stayed specialized, right? Total focus on beauty and wellness. Um, certainly I had people telling me that that's crazy and you're limiting yourself, but this is what I knew. And it's what, you know, the people I'd be hiring knew. So I stayed in my lane there. Um, The other thing is that 15 years ago, I started this business as a virtual business. So I didn't, after all these years of like riding the subway and having to be in a seat by a certain hour, um, I didn't want to schlep to the office to do one thing. Mm -hmm. So I um, found ways to create virtual workflows and process and keep building on that year after year as we would grow in our staff and grow in our clients. Um, So fast forward, like we've been, we've been perfecting (laughs) this virtual work um, when, you know, obviously a lot of companies are still struggling with it. Yeah. You were, you were way ahead of the curve being, uh, literally virtual before everybody was virtual. Like, yes. I, I, and I mean, we have an office, my team, um, m- many members of my team still like to go to the office, you know, they like to get out of their apartments. They like to have that camaraderie. Um, but all the systems and the process are built to withstand not being together. Um, and it also means that I hire very selectively, right? I have to hire people, uh, that are self-starters, that are incredible collaborators, 
you know, really precise communicators, um, effective with time, right? So you can't just be good at your job. You have to be good at these other things too, to be able to be successful here. Excellent. You, Jody, have a podcast program. Talk to us uh, how this thing uh, came to life, where brains meet beauty. I love this story. It was about six years ago. I started working with a business coach. And this is because my head felt very messy inside. I knew I wanted to grow the business. I just didn't know what direction to go in. And I had met a woman at the gym who is a business owner and she seemed so serene. And I asked her like, how are, how are you so calm? Cause I just felt like so frenetic and like I was vibrating all the time. And she said, she's gotten used to the pace of business evolving and changing, but she also has a really great coach. And I'm just like, sign me up. So I started working with Alan Cohen, you know, plug his name here. He's <laughs> a dream. And, um, he said to me in one of our first meetings, um, that I need to network. <laughs> I said, I don't know what that means and I don't want to do it. <laughs> and, you know, networking to me, I thought was looking at people like their pieces of steak, right. That I'm going to like attack. Yeah. And I also thought it meant um, like having to be out late at night at parties and, or, you know, like at these big dinners and going to fashion week stuff. And I just really don't want to do any of that. Like after the work day, I wanted to come home, put on my PJs, say hi to my kids and watch the real housewives. Like this is my happy place. <laughs> so, um, Alan went off and the next morning did his morning meditation and then called me and said, I have it. I got it for you. Start a podcast. And I said, why would I do that? And he said, because you'll get to talk to people one-on-one, which is your comfort zone. So I don't know why I just trusted that idea because I wasn't even a podcast listener, but I Googled with my team, you know, how to start a podcast and we did it. And I really didn't know um, what I was like the purpose of it. The Where Brains Meet Beauty was our agency tagline. So it just made a lot of sense that we'd adopted for the name of the show. Um, but it was like pretty quick. And maybe after three or four interviews where I realized the things that I'm curious about, um, people are really willing to talk about. And it's all about career journey. We don't talk about product or tips and tricks or anything really beauty related. It's all about who you are, h- how you do what you do, how you navigate your day. And is it specifically geared to those who are working in the beauty space and the beauty podcast? Yep. Yes. Um, all of our guests are beauty and wellness industry executives. So awesome. some of them might be household names. Some of them might be people who work behind the scenes or entrepreneurs who have yet to reach their goals. And that was super important to me. Like, I think everybody has a great and interesting story. And I didn't want to be a show that's only, you know, featuring famous people. I wanted to make sure that you got to hear the voices of the people behind the scenes who are, you know, working really hard to bring these ideas to life. So we focus completely in the beauty and wellness industry in terms of who we talk to, but what we're talking about is very universal. And that's really what led to the development of the book, you know, to get all this wisdom, this juicy, juicy stuff and bring it to a wider audience. So, so we'll, we'll dive there since you went there. So facing the seduction of success, inspiring stories on leading in business while living, living your life for those listeners, she's lifting the book right now and showing it to us. It's got a great cover and it's very cool and, and very on brand in the beauty sense of the word with some black and pink and purple and fuchsia and all that stuff. Um, First of all, you are so proud of this, I can tell. Are you not? Well, I just actually received an actual book this week. So it was all very abstract for many, (laughs) many months. And then all of a sudden um, I have it in my hands and I'm actually, I'm really impressed. <laughs> you know, when we're working on this and I have a, a writing partner, Jan Michelle, who's been one of the copywriters at Base Beauty for over a decade. So when we worked on this together, it's all very abstract. It's all just a bunch of Google Docs, you know, that keep getting updated and updated. And, um, you know, this is content that I develop via podcast and I'm seeing again in written words and I'm seeing again in outlines. So, you know, after a while, you get a little bit bored with looking at the same stuff and rereading the same work. And then seeing it in book form and going through it, I realized like, this is going to help people. You know, I, I guess I wasn't really sure and confident, but now that I see it all together, um, I would read this. So, so Jody, you front run one of the questions that I love to ask authors. And it's, and it's so awesome because I, I'm, I'm, listeners need to know she's literally smiling ear to ear, like literally like a proud mom of this thing. And that's what it is. You are giving birth to this thing. Any way you look at it, um, there's always a special gift that comes out of creating a book. And there's, there's two gifts. There's a gift for the reader who basically like when you put the book together, you had a certain purpose, you had a bunch of stories, but it turns out that there's something that kind of packages it all that the, the reader it really, really wins by getting the book. And most interestingly, as you've just mentioned, there's a gift for the author. 
and and that sense of wow this is really providing value like you feel like you you've put something together now let's talk about this explain what you did because what you did in this book is you've compiled a lot of the great learnings that you've had on your amazing podcast right so we had over 200 interviews to go through to get to um, you know the content of the book and what's fun about that is over time, these interviews all took on the same themes. It was either about work-life balance, um, quality of life, uh, leadership with kindness, or um, I'm forgetting, oh, mental health, right? So these are the four themes that would keep showing up and keep showing up. And that would be whether I was talking to an entrepreneur yeah. or a C-suite executive at a large global business, or, um, you know, like a household name type of person, like everybody's talking about the same thing. So in that sense, it made it easy to compile the content. Um, but the challenge is there's so many great stories. Like everybody has an interesting story and, um, these nuggets of, um, feeling heard, I think are most valuable for me. Like these thoughts in my head, I'm alone with them a lot. Right. But to hear someone else articulate the same sort of fear or challenge or worry or, um, pleasure it's really reassuring. So that's one of the gifts of the podcast for me. I say it's free therapy and free business coaching for me. And that's what we're doing in the book. We're really bringing like the best business coaching, the best, you know, I guess, executive therapy together so that if you are having a little bit of a gray or a blue day, just open a page and you'll get inspired and you'll snap out of it and you'll find a new way. Spectacular. Um, you're now going to get this right back at you like a tennis match. And Jody, you're now going to see how you and I are so connected because I'm going to ask you one of the signature questions we ask here on Thrive Loud. And that is for 15 years, you have been thriving and creating your own business, which is awesome. And let's say it's way beyond that because you, you had to do it through those days and years of cracking tapes together and all the hard work you had to do to get to the point you're at. You've got a podcast, you've got a book out, which means you are truly thriving, Jody. But we all have those days when we're not quite kicking in all cylinders and a little off our game. Tony Katz, can you share with the listeners maybe what practice you seek or which individual do you seek out to get yourself back on the thriving track? I love this question too. So um, I have a lot of days or parts of days or multiple hours of days where I don't feel great. Uh, there's nothing easy about this. And um, I mean, I don't. I don't know that it's always even fun, right? Like most of the time it is, but some of the times it's really not. Um, or most of the, you know, sometimes I feel like I'm getting off track. So I have a visualization that I do. I call it a bucket system. Okay. So I imagine buckets with labels on them. And I've labeled my buckets based on the things that bring me joy and satisfaction. So I have a work bucket. I have a um, spontaneous time with my kids bucket. I have a bucket for fitness, a bucket for the real housewives. I have a bucket for my husband. And if I'm feeling like not quite myself, I really close my eyes. I kind of connect my head and my heart together. And I visualize the buckets, which bucket is feeling kind of empty. And when, when I realize which bucket is, it usually comes to me pretty quickly. Then I actually just make a plan to fill it up. Mm. So this idea of like spontaneous time with my kids, not time with my kids, not driving them around, not making them breakfast, but like the fun stuff, going for a hike and finding discoveries or, you know, going on some other type of adventure or going to the museum and discovering something. So these are the spontaneous uh, moments that I crave. And if I feel like that bucket is low, I'll just, you know, make a plan for that weekend. Okay. We're going on a hike together. We're going on an adventure. We're going to do something. I'm going to be able to fill that bucket up. Mm, I like it. And I like the visual too there. Very balanced, very good leadership approach there, by the way. I find this really interesting, by the way, just as one of the, the, the analyses that the genius that you've had in your career is that you picked a lane and stuck with it and you continue to stick with it. And, but you still have the perspective to know about the balance of all the different things that you need. And I can imagine when you said things are not fun, I imagine that's the thing when you're like, Oh, I got to fill up that bucket in the work sense of what I need to do. And that's not what I want to be doing right now, but that's great perspective and great leadership messaging. So I like that. That's a good tip. Thank you. I also think about my goals, but, you know, through the past five years, the goal has been grow my business in such a way that I can hire like the best of the best. Mm -hmm. Right. So I've been really loyal to that goal. I mean, I don't really know when I set that goal, what it takes to get there, but I've been traveling towards it. 
um, little by little understanding what that means. So now I'm there. I'm like literally the best of the best. And I ring my bell all the time. <laughs> like how you can, joyful you can go I ring am. it. Uh, listeners will hear this. She's got a bell. She's got her bell right on the back. Love it. <laughs> Bells are a thing here. Um, I'll tell you why. But anyway, I wanted, yeah. you know, I wanted that goal. I reached it. So now I make new goals. Right. There's a scene in Tangled, the Disney movie Tangled, mm -hmm. um, where Rapunzel's sitting in a boat and she's about to reach this like goal that she's been waiting her whole life for. But she's terrified because what does she do next? Mm -hmm. Right. Once she reaches that goal, what happens next? And I totally relate to this movie so much because it's very overwhelming to reach your goals. And then it's also kind of overwhelming to set new ones. Oh, I like that. What, what's with the bell ringing? What's the, okay. the reason behind it? So the bell, I, I'm pretty sure I stole this from reality TV. I think it was a show about real estate agents selling properties. Okay. And when they would make a sale in the office, they'd ring a bell. So um, what I needed to do, and the reason why the bell um, felt like really significant to me is I've always dealt with a lot of self-doubt. Like I, this basically like froze me and plagued me for many years, most of my career. I mean, maybe until like yesterday, <laughs> like I live with self-doubt all the time. So um, I needed to remind myself that not, it wasn't always bad news, right? I'd like sit in the bad news. I'd sit in the hard stuff and like let them linger. And I'd wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it. And I'd wake up in the day thinking about it. And I needed to teach my body that there's good stuff that happens all the time too. So what I told myself is every time something good happens, and that could be getting a new client, it could be just dealing with a challenging situation or sending an email that was hard to write, I ring the bell. Mm. So I ring it a lot now, right? So because good things happen all the time, when someone on my team just like does something smart, even if it's so teeny tiny, we ring the bell. So everybody now on the team has bells. We have, them, <laughs> we have a lot of bells in the office. We have vintage bells, giant bells, small mini bells. Everyone has one at home and we ring the bell for each other because um, it really helps, I think, buoy your spirit because there are going to be things that are hard and you're going to have a, like a client unhappy or situation not go well. But I think that knowing that your body's experienced so much bell ringing and so much good makes those harder things easier to handle. You go. I used to work on Wall Street and we had a cowbell and we would ring the cowbell when we had something really big to go on. We, we also did the cowbell dance from Saturday Night uh, live, but that, but that's not important right now. Okay. <laughs> but Lou, I think it's important that we ring the bell for like the most teeny tiniest things too. It's yeah. not just the big stuff. Cause if we waited for the big stuff, the bell would not get used. We ring the bell for anything that feels good. I like it. Let's do the admin part of the show. And then we will get on to fun street here. Jody share with the listeners, all the places people can learn about uh, your business, your podcast, um, more about the book, book comes out June 7th, all that stuff. We will put it in the show notes, but it gets way more engagement when they hear it from you. Wonderful. Okay. So the first thing is my people are on LinkedIn. So, you know, if you have questions for me or want to meet my coach or whatever, just message me on LinkedIn. I'm Jody Katz. So um, the other way, I guess, if you're more of an Instagram person, you can find us at Where Brains Meet Beauty Podcast and my agency's Base Beauty Creative Agency. So those are the handles on Instagram. We also have a TikTok of Base Beauty Creative Agency. And for the book, uh, you can pre-order it now on Amazon and you can go to our book website, which is Seduction of Success Book and learn more about me, the testimonials of people who've read the book and love it. Um, you can uh, enjoy a chapter excerpt and other news. Before I go down Fun Street here, uh, Seduction of Success, reason behind the title. Okay, so the word seduction is so important to me. I think um, it started about, uh, maybe five, six years, no, it was five years ago. I had this goal always that I wanted to be, have my agency written about in Women's Wear Daily. So Women's Wear Daily is um, a leading publication in fashion, but they're really the only publisher who would cover beauty industry for many years. Now there's many other business um, beauty coverage, but that was really the only game in town for a long time. So that was my goal. And um, then I got, I reached the goal. We were mentioned in Women's Wear Daily, great article. And I got this taste for reaching that goal. And then I wanted more, right? So it just, I, I remember where I was at Disney with my family when the article came out and I can almost like imagine myself standing there in Epcot realizing, oh my God, we're in Women's Wear Daily. What, what's next, right? Like there was just, um, it's, I really liken it to my relationship with sugar. I eat one cookie, I need another and another. And it's really hard to stop. So I realized that, um, Every time I reach a goal, my body wants more and working in this business and growing it, it's really a seduction, mm. right? It keeps pulling me in and pulling me in. But 
don't forget, I started my business because I wanted flexibility with my time to be able to focus on my family and to have joy. So if I gave every, all of myself to my business, then I'd be ignoring the whole reason why I started this in the first place. So it's that tension between, you know, following the seduction and, you know, really getting, um, really enjoying that growth and enjoying reaching goals. And then how do I look at the rest of my life and make time for those other things that I love that maybe those other things I love seduce me in ways that are less, um, less intense. I like it. We're going to do fun street here and I'm going to kick things off in a fun way. And I have a feeling I know where this is going in some strange way. Can you share with the listeners what is your all-time favorite movie? It's another Disney movie. It's, it's a Pixar movie. Um, Wally. Have you uh, seen Wally? I love Wally. Wally's amazing. Wally's underrated is actually how good it is, right? It's a very beautiful movie. It's incredibly sophisticated. It talks of themes that are incredibly relevant to us now, certainly when it was made. Yeah. And um, it's very moving. Yeah, I'm catching a big Disney theme with you. I'm catching between yeah, the tangles. I mentioned it three times. Yeah, so you know, we, we hit the <laughs> Disney trifecta on here, which is pretty impressive. All right, so so one of the things that we do here on Fun Street is we do this little bit of a speed round, and this is how this is going to work. I want you to say the first thing that comes to your mind. These are things that lift you up, that motivate you, that make you feel good, that basically make you thrive. And there are no wrong answers because they're your answers, so you'll do just fine with them. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Of late, like recently, like now, a song that's kind of like running through your head or one that pumps you up or one you love to listen to. This is so hard because my, <laughs> this is like the wrong topic for me. I am pretty nerdy about music and I'm just like a yacht rock, yacht rock radio kind of person. Okay. Um, give me a little Michael McDonald and I'm happy. So I know this is not something most people admit in public, but I don't have any contemporary music passions. Um, it's all about just this, this music that I think I used to hear in the car on the radio when I was a little kid, right? Like in the late seventies, early eighties. I, I like it. And who doesn't like, like, who doesn't love Yacht Rock Radio? It's spectacular. It's like just fun, easy going music to listen to all day. I'm a, I'm a big fan. So, all right. You also just made our producers happy that we don't have to get, get something new. We get to do something <laughs> classic. All right. Here's how this works. Let's go. Ready? Um, we did a song. A favorite food that's not a dessert. Oh my gosh. Okay. Wait, am I timed on this? No. Okay. Favorite but if you're not careful, I'm going to ring the bell on you. <laughs> yes. Okay. I really do love food. Um, I'm going to say guacamole. Oh, okay. That's a good one. Guacamole. A favorite dessert. Chocolate lava cake. Oh, you know, I, one of the days I'm going to, I'm going to ask interns. I'm shouting this out to you guys. If we did a compilation of how many people love that, as their dessert. That's definitely up there. It's got to be one of the ones that people just like, ooh, it hits all the buttons. Sweet, chocolate, delicious, hot, mm, yum. Okay. Well, Lou, it's also very easy to make at home. It's like well, surprisingly, yeah. shockingly easy. Are you a good cook? Um, I am. Yeah. Okay. She's like, yeah, I am. She's like, dust it off over here. I'm pretty damn good. An activity you wish you did more of? Hiking. An activity you wish you did less of? Lying down. Well, that's fascinating. <laughs> I know a lot of people that say I need to stop standing. I need to lie down. Jody Katz, if I could snap my fingers and you could be anywhere in the world, where are you? Um, it's either Egypt or Morocco. Have you been? No. Okay, that's why it's on the list. It's like one of those. Those. That's where you want to go next. Uh, the last part. You, you. We. We kicked the conversation off. You got into this whole world because you were planning ahead. Uh, you mentioned you have kids. Uh, how old are your kids right now? I have a 14-year-old son and 11-year-old daughter. Ah, my goodness. I'd love to. You know, you, you look like you could be working for a beauty craft because you look as young. You don't look old enough to have children at, at that age, but that's amazing. Uh, as, as they look at you and you are a role model to them, what's some of the messages or lessons that you've learned as a leader in business that you've kind of carried over as a parent? This is interesting because I'm actually going to answer it the opposite way because I watched my son, he's a wrestler and um, he started, I don't know, when he was like seven years old. Now he's 14, been doing it a long time. He used to lose a lot. I mean, he probably lost all the time, but he wanted to keep going. I don't know why he wanted to keep going, right? To keep getting knocked down and pinned and stuff. Um, and now I watch him and he is so technically 
um, sophisticated. He's so composed. He almost looks like an artist as he's moving through like the things to get to the points that he wants. So I watch him and I'm like, oh my God, this is so similar to what I've experienced. I just, it wasn't linear for me. I was, you know, pinned and pinned and pinned all these years, right? It's 15 years is a long time. Like maybe like 12 of them kind of were, you know, not good, you know, from a business perspective. So I watch him move through this journey and now be succeeding and have clarity on what the job is. And like, wow, I lived through that. I just needed to see it from someone, some another point of view to understand what that means. And it's such a good lesson for me. Things are going to be hard. And if you stick with it and keep practicing, it's going to get better. I like it. Jody Katz, where brains meet beauty, base beauty, creative agency, and everybody, June 7th, facing the seduction of success. Thank you so much for coming on Thrive Loud. This has been awesome, Jody. And uh, kudos to you, continued success to everything you're doing. And thanks for coming on Thrive Loud. Thank you, Lou. And to all our listeners out there, thank you for joining us. And until next time, keep moving onward and upward. And remember, be brief, be bright, be gone. You've been listening to Thrive Loud with your host, Lou Diamond. Check us out on the web at thriveloud.com and follow us on Instagram, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Facebook at Thrive Loud. And check us out on the Good Pods app at Thrive Loud, where you can follow, listen, and connect directly to Lou and all of the Thrive Loud episodes. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.